Hello, Ben the Pat Tester here. Welcome back to the channel. Thanks for all your likes and subscribing. Over 500 subscribers now, which is absolutely fantastic. So thank you. My aim is to get to a thousand. That's my goal. Uh, I don't earn anything from these videos. I don't earn any money or get anything for it. Uh, just uh, a reward for kind of helping you guys out. And so it'd be great to get to a thousand subscribers. So uh, today, very quick video. Somebody asked me how to test 16 amp. Um, either adapters or, or cables. Uh, it's quite simple really, it's not very much different from testing a, a normal extension lead um, in terms of the test that you do through your machine um, but there's a few things to look out for before when you do your um, visual inspection. So as you can see here the 16 amp connectors might be a little bit different to what you're used to um, so of course um, you're going to make sure that you've got a male and female uh, on uh, on each end so one, one male on one end female on another uh, watch out because there are some cables that you'll find that have been made by people and they'll have um, a male, uh, they'll have a 13 amp plug here and then a male end on here and obviously those pins will then become live so you always want to make sure um, that you've, you've got the connectors um, around the right way. Um, another thing to look out for is actually the type of cable. Now this type of cable here as you can see if I can find it, um, I can't find it, there we are. It's called HO7RNF, and that basically means is it's a definition of the type of cable it is. So this particular cable is a rubber uh, cable, um, which gives it better um, longevity in extreme conditions. There's a whole table online you can see, and there's different types of cable. Now, the two main types of cable you'll come across is like a blue um, flex, which is called, um, I think it's Arctic Cable, they call it. Um, and then you'll come across this one, which is HO7. I would al always recommend, if you're making these cables yourself or using cables like this um, or advising customers, I would always recommend to use this particular cable, HO7 RNF. It's the best cable you can get. There's, um, there's uh, a main manufacturer called Titanex. Um, and um, there's various other brands available um, and this particular cable is a 2.5 millimeter uh, flex a 2.5 millimeter cause now it's quite important to note most 16 amp cable um, will will be or should be 2.5 millimeter flex but you will also come across cable that might have 16 amp connectors fitted that'll only be 1.5 millimeter flex. Now, this particular cable, 2.5 millimeter, can take up to, I believe, off the top of my head, 20 amp. So to have 16 amp connectors on it is fine. Now you might say, well, if the, if the flex is only 1.5 millimeter flex, that can only take up to, um, you know, say 15 amp, say, um, but I've got 16 amp connectors on it, so surely that shouldn't be allowed. Well, that's a whole other subject for another day, but that that would be okay um but that's a whole other subject about system and power design and the way it's laid out and everything else but so just assume for a moment that this is okay is okay so what you'll need to do on these is you'll see little um, on these particular ones, um, you can see I've tested this before, there's little catches here which you can open the connector, um, pull it apart and then you can um, check your terminals inside, check there's no rust, there's no water getting in, check these are all tightened up, this is um, uh, clamps the rubber gland on there, um, so stop any water ingress, so you can do that on both sides, other connectors will have screws inside there or they'll have screws on here, um, so check that they haven't gone rusty and um, compromised the screw so once you've done your full visual check and we'll assume that we have on this one I've done it check there's no damage to your cable as well there's no nicks or or damage you know it's been run over by a car or a tractor on a field or something and you've got a damaged cable that's the most common thing the other common thing is these will become loose and the outer sheath will pull out and you'll have exposed inner cores at each end so they're the main things to to look out for and then when you're running it through your machine you will do it exactly the same um, 
as an extension lead but you're you obviously you'll need to account for the length of the cable and the cross section of the cable as well because that will give you um, a different earth reading which your machine may not be set up for it may not just be set up for kind of 1.25 mil two meter extension lead so you're going to have to either if your machine allows you to set up some um, test sequences that allows for the length and the cross section of the cable or if you've got a manual machine then you know there's various guides online and tables that um, no doubt you keep with you um, so you can work out the, the kind of the, the cross section um, and then obviously here um, you'll need some 16 amp adapters um, I think these ones I, I made but I mean you can buy them online or you can you can make them um, cheaper so this just remember this is a 16 amp single phase cable defined by the blue connectors um, here obviously it doesn't help with these because some of the connectors that you have now are black um, but three phase power is obviously de normally defined by red connectors um, but again that's a whole other story for a whole other day um, so this particular one there yeah you can see the IEC reading there 0.2 so that's that's a bit higher reading than what you would normally get for a standard extension lead but because of the length of the cable and the cross section um, that is perfectly acceptable then you would normally do your um, insulation resistance ignore the 250 on there I just did this on a manual test just to show you for the video but you would normally do your insulation at 500 volt and then it will check for the polarity as well just to check that you've got all the um, cross section all the cables inside around the right way and that is that is literally it um, you'll have to get a bit creative with labeling these because obviously sometimes these are used in very harsh environments outside and inside I've, I've got a, a label there um, which is heat shrunk um, standard pat labels to be honest with you don't really work um, they'll stick on they'll get water on them they'll come off straight away but you can buy proper tags they're more expensive as well but um, I do a lot of event work and bits and pieces and I tend to find that I will just test the cables uh, against the asset number that I have on the cable here but I won't actually pat label it because I know as soon as you get a bit of rain in a field, the label's going to come off. So I hope that helps. If you do have any questions about that, then please do let me know. And if you'd like to see any specific videos, um, give us a shout.